Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Well, this is an article we're going to go through from the New York Times. We'll call it the Government Times because uh, it's pretty much the government line. But we, And then we're going to look at uh, a silver story from SRS Rocco, a fascinating story on the maple leaf in Canada. But first, I want to take you to this PDF. This is a municipal bond index from Puerto Rico. This is the S&P's um, rating of that. And the bonds in Puerto Rico now are, are down around C something. They're junk. But what I think is fascinating about this uh, index here is the chart. Um, you can see here that the starting year is 2006. There's three uh, bonds here. The red is the S&P Municipal Bond High Yield Index. I guess that's would be high risk maybe. And then you can see the blue is the S&P Municipal Bond Index. And then this other one in the green is the Puerto Rican Bond Index. Now a couple of things here. The first thing that's fascinating is that the High Yield Index in the red really isn't that much higher than the uh, the regular bond index and I'm going to show you here why that's the case of course it's, it's the case because the governments of the world are interested in kicking the can down the road they don't want to face reality but uh, the other thing that's really interesting about this chart is the index on Puerto Rican bonds here for where it's standing right now at about 110 and you can see it started at 100 so there's actually a gain, and you can see here the gain for over the 10-year period, 0.93%. Now over the three-year and the one-year and five-year, there's a loss, as well as year-to-date. But uh, there's a one-month gain of 4%. Why on earth would Puerto Rican bonds be gaining when they're at risk of default? Well, because it's not just a matter of betting on the solvency of a particular country or municipality or city or state what the investors are betting on and they're going to tell you it's hedge funds well it's not but what the investors are betting on is that a government is going to come and bail it out and that's exactly what the New York Times is calling for here here's their article from yesterday save Puerto Rico before it goes broke now I'm going to read through this and just try to counter the lies here. Um, it's incredible how desperate these people are who represent the establishment, how desperate they are to keep the system going when the system's already bankrupt. So let's read this. Puerto Rico's government is on the verge of running out of money. A messy default is in nobody's interest. So they are telling you right at the top uh, we need intervention, which is why Congress ought to move swiftly to provide the American territory with a way to restructure its huge debt and revive its economy. The Obama administration last week offered the outline of a rescue plan to help the island and the 3.5 million American citizens who live there. You can see the spin there. They want to make sure that you know that these are Americans who are bailing out Americans. The plan would impose new oversight on the island's finances and expand access to government programs like Medicaid and the Earned Income Tax Credit. So they're going to grow the government. Now, the Earned Income Tax Credit, uh, if you don't know what that is, basically what that is is a tax refund for not paying taxes. So if you're a person who doesn't work enough to qualify to owe any taxes, they actually pay you money. So this is really just helicopter drop money. That's what they're proposing. Crucially, it asks Congress to change the law so that Puerto Rico's territorial government and its municipalities can seek bankruptcy protection. Political leaders in Puerto Rico and many financial and legal experts have been saying for months that the territory cannot repay the approximately $72 billion it owes to hedge funds. Okay, there's the spin here. You see the first one they say is hedge funds. Now I've covered it before. Hedge funds are actually a tiny percentage of the people who are invested in Puerto Rican bonds. 
The highest percentage of investors in Puerto Rican bonds are Puerto Rican retirees, and the next group is American retirees. So, uh, but this is how the the communist government times, uh, New York Times wants to spin things. It's the evil hedge funds, and so they put that first. Mutual funds and other investors, its economy is not growing, and tens of thousands of residents are leaving every year for the mainland to look for work. More than 300,000 have left in the last 10 years. Right, because socialism is bankrupting the economy. I've already covered the fact that more than 50% of the people are on um, aid, and another large percent work for the government. So we're talking about uh, the taxpayers. Uh, There really aren't any. Its public pension plan needs a cash infusion of about $44 billion. Puerto Rico has cut spending and raised taxes in hope of saving itself, but that hasn't worked. Okay, this is the spin they always give you. Of course, they haven't cut anything, and they never do. They're going to talk about Greece here in a second, and Greece hasn't cut anything either. So they always talk about austerity, but austerity never happens. And it won't work in the foreseeable future given the sorry state of the island's economy. Of course, the island's economy is in a sorry state because they're socialists. Bankruptcy seems inevitable, but under federal law, Puerto Rico's government, its municipalities, and its government-owned utilities cannot go to bankruptcy court. Hence, the administration's request for a new bankruptcy process for territorial governments and a change in the law to allow Puerto Rican cities and public utilities to seek Chapter 9 protection, much as local governments like Detroit and Orange County, California, have done. Many investors who have lent money to Puerto Rico and stand to lose under any debt restructuring are bitterly opposed to the Obama plan. They say Puerto Rico can repay all of its debts if it tightens its belt, in other words, stop spending so much money, and privatizes utilities and other government-owned businesses. Changing the law now, they argue, is deeply unfair, but the record of what has happened in troubled countries like Greece is clear. Austerity policies have only worsened the crisis. That's because they've never done any austerity. Uh, That's a lie. We've exposed that many times. As for the fairness argument, legislators change laws all the time to meet new circumstances. Okay. What investors must realize is that an orderly restructuring is far better alternative than the long and complex legal battles that would inevitably follow a sudden default. American bankruptcy courts have a good track record of resolving complicated debt cases, and if, in addition to reworking the bankruptcy law, Congress also created an oversight board, as the Obama administration recommends, investors could have some confidence that Puerto Rico's politicians would make needed policy changes. Seriously? That's ridiculous. There's no doubt that Puerto Rican leaders have mismanaged the island's finances and economy. What's at issue now, though, is not Puerto Rico's past, but its future and that of its inhabitants. If Congress doesn't like the administration's ideas, it needs to come up with its own. Okay, well, I can come up with one. Um, Let them fire people and cut uh, what the government's paying until it meets what tax revenues they're bringing in. And then that's problem solved. But they're not going to do that because this is all about a bailout. Now let's look at this debt here. I want you to think about this debt. This debt, $72 billion, let's put this in terms of silver ounces. This comes to almost 5 billion ounces of silver at current prices. So think about that. Just the debt of one tiny territory of the United States is five times the available silver that can be mined in a year or probably is even stockpiled. But still, people are investing in these Puerto Rican government bonds and they're not really going down. Of course, they should not be down here at 80 They should be down near zero, but they're not because people are betting on a bailout. Now, the other thing that's interesting here is that you have this red line, which is the S&P Municipal High high Yield Bond Index. You can see it traded at 80 back in 2008, late 2008, during the financial crisis, where... Right now, you've got Puerto Rican bonds trading at 110. 
So that's a big discrepancy. Obviously, the powers that be have invested themselves in kicking the can down the road, keeping everything going until, of course, the sudden default, the sudden collapse happens. Now let's jump over to that SRS Rocco article and let's think about the amount of silver that that $72 billion of Puerto Rican debt could buy. Uh, just one tiny bailout to keep the system going. And uh, you can see that there's nothing like that amount of silver around for anybody to buy. So this is the latest breakdown from Steve St. Angelo of SRS Rocco talking about the number of silver maple leaves and it's pretty amazing when you look at the breakdown here so let's read this the collapse of the western financial system already occurred years ago even though the top banks continue to behave as if they are solvent institutions with functioning balance sheets they're totally bankrupt without fed and central bank intervention this is explained in detail in the video fed audit shocker they came from planet klepto I posted this video on my site last month and I continue to urge readers to watch it as it provides actual data showing how the Federal Reserve propped up the top U.S. banks with trillions of dollars in sweetheart deals. While the majority of Western investors fell for the scam hook, line, and sinker, a small percentage of the population realized this signaled the peak and end of the U.S. fiat dollar monetary system. We can see this huge world-changing event take place in the chart below. This chart is one of the few I've made public from my silver chart report. Chart 36 shows total sales of Canadian silver maples from 1988 to 2014. There's no other chart of its kind on the internet. I broke down Canadian maple leaf sales in two periods. As you can see in the chart, total silver maple sales were 21 million from 1988 to 2007. Thus, sales during the 20 year period averaged a little more than 1 million silver maples a year. In contrast, a total of 134 million ounces of silver maples were sold from 2008 to 2014 and an average of 19.1 million ounces a year. Basically, investors purchased 17 times more Canadian silver maples from the year 2008 to 2014, a seven-year time period, compared to 1988 to 2007, a 20-year time period. This huge spike in silver maple buying after 2007 also took place with the U.S. Mint Silver Eagle sales chart. The massive change in Canadian silver maple leaf sales can be seen by the following figures, and he gives that there. So that's fascinating to think about. There are a number of people who are realizing that uh, the writing is on the wall. The Western financial system is finished. Stories like this about Puerto Rico and the New York Times basically begging for the Congress to bail out Puerto Rico. There's no way out of this thing. It's just an attempt to kick the can down the road. Um, if Puerto Rican, uh, if the investors in Puerto Rican bonds would have invested in silver, uh, there's a good chance that they could be made whole. Now they're banking on the fact that uh, the politicians in the United States don't want things to collapse on their watch, so they're going to change the laws, they're going to bail out uh, the investors, they're going to make the territory uh, kind of a uh, new Greece, and uh, they're going to kick the can down the road because they don't want things to collapse on their watch. And we'll talk to you next time.